By Victorian times, accent and class were becoming synonymous. Speech, education, and advancement went together to guarantee good English and a good future. Parents would send their children away to school. The English public schools took boys from all over the country and gave them a standard English accent. With the right accent, the educated middle class became captains of industry, army and navy officers, imperial civil servants, lawyers, politicians, and even teachers who would pass their accents to the next generation. As this film of Winchester shows, these public school attitudes survived unchallenged into the 1960s. By then, the public school accent had become universally the English of radio commentators and television interviewers. Of course, a lot of people say that, um, a lot of people in the Labour Party think that the public school should be abolished uh, <laughs> because they produce snobs. Do you think there's any truth in that at all? Um, anyone got any comments on that? To an extent, I think, yes. You do? Could you come forward a bit? Um, in, in what way? Um, I well, I think it, it helps to make class distinction all the greater if you get two so separate bodies as the grammar yes. school and the public schools. I think somehow you ought to merge them together yes. a bit. What do, you, what do you think the answer will be? To compromise more in the future? Um, yes, I think you want to start slowly and yes. not do it all at once. Yes. Do you think happen. that will happen? Well, I think it may do. Yes. Depends on what happens in the government. Superficially, this is still unchanged. Twenty years later, the right words and the right accent, a world away from Cockney, are still important for a successful career. The new boys are still drilled in Winchester school slang. What are battlings? Uh, weekly pocket money. What is mugging? Sorting up. What is a cropple? It's a punishment given by a prefect or don. What is bartering? Cricket practice. Cricket fielding practice. Who is Jupiter? A notorious rascal of St. Cross, Lancis Defunct, who has been a notion since time immemorable. Immemorial! Who is Jupiter? Dr. John Wells is an expert in the evolution of British accents. But even in 20 years, there have been some significant changes in public school English. And what is a cropple? A punishment for being ex Trump. What is pitch up? One's parents or relations. I think there are two main differences in the voice quality between the two excerpts we've seen. In the earlier one, they're rather tense in, uh, around the larynx. And they've also rather strangely got creaky voice coming in of the kind, no, no. In the more recent excerpt, they're more relaxed and they don't have that creaky voice. So in the earlier one, they're saying things like, slowly, quickly. Um, yes, I think you want to start slowly and uh, not do it Whereas the once. newer trend is to make it closer, more like the E of beat, and say quickly, slowly. One thing is the A ah vowel, the vowel that comes in words like trap. We had that word battlings, and in the earlier excerpt, he was saying something like battlings. What is a jerry bone battlings? Whereas in the newer one, it's more like battlings. What are battlings? Uh, weekly pocket money. The other vowel I noticed is the oo vowel, which we got actually in the word Jupiter that came in both excerpts. Who was Jupiter? This used to be oo, spoon, Jupiter, and we heard that on the earlier excerpt. But on the second one, it's become more like oo, Jupiter. Who is Jupiter? And and this is something that was long regarded as cockney or just vulgar speech, but is now spreading out geographically and socially, spreading geographically from the southeast of England, spreading out socially up the social stratifications towards the upper class. It's become smart to go down market. People are now a bit embarrassed to be seen to be imitating upper class behavior. And this is reflected, of course, in their pronunciation. If you walk down the street, people will say, posh air. <laughs> yes, people tend to think that um, people at public schools have very posh accents. They're all very polite and proper. Very lardy dart and sort of what ho. What used to be called very good English, Oxford English. You know, sort of tally ho chaps. So something like that. Um, vastly different to how we sound. These boys are speaking RP, received pronunciation. Good job. 
that place nearly went back to the beginning. <laughs> but curiously, they're showing signs of Cockney yeah, influence. Like many standard English speakers, they don't say bottle for bottle, but they might say quite interesting for quite interesting. I think you'd say that Cockney is the most important source of new pronunciations coming in. And this is something that isn't just today, but has been the case for 500 years. What typically seems to happen is that some new pronunciation arises in Cockney. It's condemned as vulgar, but then after a time, it comes up market, people start imitating it, and in due course, it becomes received pronunciation. And then a bit later, it becomes old-fashioned and it disappears. And so we have a constant change going on over the centuries. I think there's evidence, for example, that the A vowel in face. Now, we know this started out, well, it was fast, then there was a great vowel shift, it became face. Now, that monophthong face, which you still get in Scotland and places, gave way to a diphthong A face. And I think that was originally a Cockney vulgarism. But meanwhile, it's become posh, and it's now the... RP form because Cockney has had another innovation and moved on to face, and that's today's vulgarism. Maybe in another 200 years, the posh form will be face, and the Cockney vulgarism will be something else again. I don't know, voice. Here we go. Two, four, three. Anything you like, dear. Come on, fill the call and see. Come round here, my old punky table. Come here. God bless you. I'll tell you what, eh? I'm not there. Two hundred years ago, the influence of Cockney began spreading in a more dramatic way. The speech of London and neighbouring counties like Essex and Middlesex was sent into a remote exile when England's petty criminals were shipped as convicts to the penal colony of New South Wales. Old, unseaworthy ships often dismasted were moored in the rivers and estuaries and became floating prisons for people sentenced to transportation. They housed the petty criminals of industrial England before the long sea voyage to the prison colonies of Australia. There were many English voices on board, but the predominant one was from the London area. In fact, Cockneys accounted for more than one-third of the original generation of Australians.